Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another uh, installment of my series uh, of videos on how to bomb in BCS, uh, specifically how to drop iron bombs. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about the basics. Um, this is really the second video in the series. If you haven't already watched the first one, um, you might want to go and, uh, and watch the first one. Some of the stuff I talk about here make, might make a little bit more sense if you have. Um, oh, also, by the way, um, there will be a uh, mission on my server that basically uh, you can use to practice the stuff we're going to talk about here. It's really just a very simple range mission, but it does have the added feature uh, that you can grade yourself by setting an accuracy goal, and the mission will let you know whether or not you made it. Uh, you can drop my, by my Discord server, and the link is in the description if you want to pick up that mission. So today we're going to start talking about the specifics of the basics of dropping iron bombs. Now, I should point out before we start that everything I'm going to talk about here is pretty much my opinion. Some of it's at least partially based on various manuals that I've uh, read, and it's of course based on other YouTube videos, but in the end, this is just the way that I think about the problem, uh, what works for me in terms of solving it, and it's not the only way to approach it. If you have your own methods, please feel free to contribute some constructive comments in the comments. Okay, I'm going to divide the process of dropping iron bombs into three phases, and these are the approach, the roll-in, and the dive and release. In this video, uh, I'm actually going to start at the end and work back to the beginning, because I think understanding where we're going makes it a little easier to understand how to get there. So in this video, we're going to talk about the dive and release. And on that point, um, let's start off by talking about the effective dive angle. Now, you could probably have, and may have had, arguments about what is the right dive angle. Uh, the answer, of course, is that no, there isn't a right dive angle, and what dive angle you choose depends on a lot of factors, some of which may be specific to the target, some of which are specific to the ordnance you're dropping, and might even be specific to the aircraft you're flying. So, here's a few things to think about, though. Shallow dives, in general, tend to feel a bit easier, uh, in that they are more controlled, you pick up speed more slowly, and generally you have much longer to line up on the target, and to some extent that process is a bit easier than when you are diving steeply. But, here's the thing, steeper dives are actually, objectively, more accurate, and that's because the steeper your dive angle, the less sensitive your result is to exactly hitting your release parameters when you hit the pickle button. I mean, think about it. If your dive is vertical, then the point at which you release the bomb really makes no difference at all to where it's going to land. So you'll actually see this in practice if you're using a HUD. You'll notice that in steeper dives, the pipper actually moves over the ground much more slowly than in shallow dives, meaning that the timing of your pickle does not need to be as precise in order to hit the target. This, of course, is why original dive bombers like the Stuka and the Dauntless were able to achieve such precise results because they were de designed to dive almost vertically on their targets. Another point to note is that tactically, in general, steeper dives are safer, partly because of the increased vertical motion, which makes it a little bit harder for gunners to deal with, especially if uh, they are not actually the thing you're diving at. But more importantly, the less time you spend in your dive, the better, because in your dive is when you present an unmaneuvering target, and of course, it's also where you produce an almost stationary target to anything that is actually in the target area. Of course, the issue with steeper dives, though, is that they require you to start from a higher altitude, which may not even be possible depending on the weather in the target area. Steeper dives are also not a good choice if you're trying to attack a linear target with a line of bombs. So, as I said, um, what the right dive angle is really does depend. But given that steeper angles tend to be more challenging, uh, my advice is to start out at, say, 30 degrees or so and try to work your way up to higher dive angles than that when you practice. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's take a look at the dive itself. And again, let's start at the end and work back to the beginning. So let's take a look at the culmination of the whole process, the release point. It's easy to see that this is the moment to release your bombs, but how do you get there? Uh, we talked about, a bit about this in the last video. The most important point to remember is that you want to let the dive itself do the work. You don't want to be over-controlling during the dive. Basically, the less time you spend working on your stick, 
the happier you're going to be, at least in this case. To do this, you need to be aware of two things, the flight path vector and an aim-off mark or aiming point. And all you actually need to do, if you're doing this right, is to put your flight path vector on the aim-off mark and keep it there. The rest should take care of itself. Now, when I say do it right, that does imply a few things. The first of which is that you have to pick the right aiming point. And the most important part of that process is picking a point that is directly beyond the target, by which I mean that the bomb fall line that runs from the aim point to the pipper has to pass through the target. Now, this is reasonably easy to do when you have a HUD, and if you screw it up, it's reasonably easy to fix. But you really want to practice getting it right, because when you have to start doing this without a HUD, like in the A4, or the F5, or yes, the F4E, when it arrives, you will not have the luxury of having a bomb fall line on screen. So it's really important to start developing the ability to see where the plane is pointed and to mentally draw a line from there down to the pipper when the wings are level and making sure that they line up. The other thing to remember is that the position of your aiming point will control the height of your drop. The farther beyond the target that you aim, the higher your release altitude will be, which is one of the things that makes it harder to drop at higher altitudes, especially without a pipper and a bomb fall line. Because the higher you want to drop, the farther off the target you have to aim, which makes it harder to line up. Okay, so really the dive is about picking a good aim off point and then flying straight toward it, and after that it's just timing. But even if you know exactly where you want to aim at, getting your flight path vector on that point still requires some technique and some practice. And this is all about the roll out. In other words, you have to figure out how to stop your roll in and come back to the wings level so that you're aimed exactly where you want to be. In general, the technique that I use, although I gotta admit I'm not as good at this as I would like to be, is to try to place the flight path vector on or a little bit below the target and then roll out until my wings are level and then I gently pull up to the aim off mark and then stop pulling there. Now, I think the reason for doing it this way is because it's actually the easiest way to make sure everything's aligned when you select the aim off point. Because if you're pointed at the target when you roll out and then your wings are level and you pull straight up, your aim off mark will have to be directly beyond the target. This is because if you're centered on the target when you roll out, the target will stay in the center of your HUD because everything will rotate around it. But if you're not centered as you roll out, the target will move left or right as you roll out and this will make the alignment a lot more difficult. Again, it's not so bad when you have a bomb fall line and a pipper, but if you don't, it gets complicated in a hurry. And at least for me, this is the single biggest source of inaccuracy in my bombing, I am sure, and I continue to struggle with it. And that is mostly because it's not actually that easy to point the nose at a point on the ground and then stop it exactly there before rolling out. It's particularly hard when you're trying to do it quickly. The issue is that as you roll in and pull up to the target, the aircraft has momentum. And just because you stop pulling doesn't mean the nose stops moving. Judging exactly how much to pull and when to stop, or even add a little forward pressure to stop, is the key. So this is one of the things where practice is essential, especially if you want to get fast at it. Because the other thing is that every aircraft reacts differently. So you're going to have to practice in the aircraft that you want to use to be bombing in, in order to get good at it, especially if you want to get fast. But my suggestion is that you start out by learning how to do it deliberately. Leave yourself plenty of altitude and focus on the accurate rollout, even if you can't get there very quickly. Then gradually pick up the pace by accelerating your roll-in. But remember, the point of the roll-in is to get you to the point where you can roll out accurately. And so we're going to talk about the roll in in the next video. But for now, let's summarize what we're talking about here today. Um, the first thing is that as far as dive angle is concerned, there is no real right dive angle, although I think you should start practicing between about 25 and 30 degrees. And if you can get it up to 35 to 45, then that will stand you in good stead, at least in some situations. 
The common errors in the dive and release, first of all, are pulling up uh, too strongly, not pointing at the aim off mark and letting the dive do the work. Uh, a second error is certainly aiming too low. If your aim off mark is too close to the target, you're going to end up being very low when you actually release. A third error that we've been talking about, a uh, source of inaccuracy, is having an aim off mark that's not in the right place, meaning it's not directly behind the target, so that when your pipper crosses the target line, it's not over the target. And the final source of error, really, is that you are too slow to line up, so you can't get the aim off mark that you want in time, and again, you end up either dropping too low or rushing it and dropping inaccurately. Now, usually, the slow lineup is because of a poor roll-in or maybe a poor roll-out. So we'll probably spend a little bit of time talking about that in the next video. For now, though, that's going to do it for me today. Again, there is a mission available on my Discord server. If you want to try it out, you can always drop by the Discord server for a discussion about anything that you heard or saw in the video. Uh, please feel free to leave constructive comments if you do have ways of solving any of these problems that I haven't talked about. For now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.